To finish off our app, we're going to add one last important feature. We're going to require users to authenticate using Face ID or Touch ID, or if you're feeling really fancy, Optic ID on the Vision Pro, in order to see their saved locations. After all, all this is their private data, and it's important we're respectful of that. Of course, at the same time, it gives me a chance to teach you another important concept in a practical context. First, we have to add some new state into our view model here to track whether the app is currently unlocked or not. So we'll start by adding a new property here. Var is unlocked equals false. Second, we've got to add the face ID permission request to our project configuration options. If you haven't added this ready, you want to go to your bucket list option here, choose bucket list under targets, then go to the info tab. This is where the project configuration options live. And now select any one of them, right click and choose add row and a new property here to configure things with. You want to scroll all the way down, look for privacy, face ID, usage description, that, that's it there, boom. Add that thing there and the text next to it in the value, describe what you want to do with face ID. For example, you might say, uh, please authenticate yourself to unlock places, like that. So we're giving the system an understanding of what we're trying to do. Now back in our view model, we can go ahead and add in an import for local authentication. So we'll say here, import local authentication. So we have access to Apple's authentication framework. And now for the hard part. <laughs> the code for biometric authentication is a teensy bit unpleasant, thanks to subjective C roots. It's always a good idea to get it as far away as you can from the neatness of SwiftUI. And so we're gonna write a new method down here called authenticate that handles all the biometric work for us. This means creating a new LA context, so we have something that can check and perform biometric authentication in one place. We'll ask it as our current device, is it actually capable of doing biometric authentication in the first place? If it is, we'll start the request and provide a closure to run when it completes. When it finishes, check the result, and then if it's successful, set unlock to be true, so we can run our app as normal. So, putting that all together, we'll do func authenticate. Make a new context, which is an instance of LA context. And then if you remember, we've got to make a new NS error optional to handle any errors that happen. Old Objective-C stuff, that's how it works here. And now I'll say, if our context can evaluate the policy, which is device owner authentication with biometrics, and the error is gonna go here with ampersand error. If that succeeds, we're good to go for biometrics. If it fails, error will tell us why. So we're here. We're gonna have a reason for touch ID purposes. We'll do uh, please, Authenticate, oops, authenticate yourself to unlock your places. And now we'll say context, evaluate the policy. And the one we want here is uh, this closure here, policy, localized reason reply. Our policy is, again, device owner authentication with biometrics. Our reason is that reason string. And the reply will be a trailing closure that is given two things, whether it's successful or not, and if not, what the authentication error was, like so. If we're here, it means we can use biometrics. We have successfully used biometrics. We are here, it means we're good to go if success is true. So if it is, we'll say self is unlocked equals true. If it's not true, it means it failed the biometric test, then we have an error. And if we get to down here with an else block, it means we have no biometrics. They have a iPod touch, or they haven't even signed up to touch ID on their device or whatever. It's not impossible. So remember, this string in the code is use touch ID, whereas in for penis is used for face ID, for whatever reason known only to Apple. 
And now we're going to make a small change. It's in reality very, very small, but it can be hard to visualize if you're, if you're reading the article of this video rather than watching me now. What we're going to do is back in our content view, we're going to take everything inside this body property, everything, and put it inside our condition. We'll say here, if view model dot is unlocked like that, boom, show the map reader. Not is if like that show the map reader down to here. If we're unlocked, show the map reader. If we aren't unlocked, we'll place a button here to handle authentication. And so now all that remains is to fill in this button here comment with an actual button that triggers the authenticate method. You can design this using whatever you want, it's down to you. But honestly, something simple is enough now. We'll say here. There's a button that does a title unlock places and have an action attached to it, which is our view model to authenticate method call like that. And we'll add a bit of padding around it. We'll add a background of let's do blue, a foreground style of whites, and then a clip shape of capsule like that. So press command R to build and run your code again, because it's almost done now. What you want to do to test out Face ID is go to the uh, Features menu, look for Face ID, and make sure you have Enrolled checked. That means it's now ready to go, enrolled. Now, if we hadn't done that, it would fail immediately. There's no biometrics available. We have, so pressing Unlock Places will begin a Face ID unlock. So now you choose. If you want to have a matching face, go back to here and choose matching face. You can see it's option command N, I'm sorry. And a non-matching face, option command N. Very useful shortcuts with when you're looking at face ID, much, much faster than you want to work with otherwise in the, the uh, shortcuts. So I'll press option command M for a matching face. Boom, unlock straight away. And with that, our code is done. And that's another app complete. Good job.